Hey guys, Tony Benito here. So you just bought an Einstein, that's fantastic. Let me go over some things that you need to know to get off to a good start. So a simple Google search will give you the website where you can down the Envision One RP software. Um, and it's a very simple process. They basically talk you through it, uh, but this would be the first step that I would do. You can do this even before your printer arrives just to have everything ready to go. And then once you open the software, it will prompt you to request a license. And this is very simple as well. You just enter your name, you enter the type of printer, which is obviously for you going to be an Einstein. Uh, and then you input the serial number. And I'll show you a little later in the video where that serial number is located. It's basically on the back of your printer. Um, and it's just a combination of letters and numbers that you'll input. And when you send your request, uh, it will go to the good people at Desktop Health and they will send you back your license. Uh, in the meantime, there is a temporary license that you can use. It's a trial license, basically, that will get you through the first week, really, of printing. But, uh, you know, you want to get on getting your uh, permanent license, um, get that process going. And then as you're in the software here, you can just kind of play around with it to become familiar. There are other videos that I've put out on kind of what to do uh, as far as uh, intro to software type things. Um, but anything that you may need to do is found in this upper left-hand corner as far as activating license, checking for updates, all those things. Uh, the software is updated relatively frequently when they, especially when they change build styles, they're, they're constantly improving support structure and thing like that, things like that. So you want to always uh, keep an eye open for uh, new updates. Um, also, very important that to know that you will need to install build styles immediately. And these can be found also uh, with a simple Google search. So you will get some build styles on that thumb drive that they send, but those are generally a little bit outdated. These build styles are updated quite frequently. And so the most up-to-date ones can be found with a simple Google search, Einstein build style, uh, desktop health should bring you to that. Um, and then it's just a matter of picking out those specific for the Einstein. Uh, and those are constantly being added to and updated. And you will want to download all of them uh, for all the materials just so you have them within your software. It's just a matter of clicking that download button. It will download into your um, download folder. Uh, and from there, you will open the file. Go back into the software, click on that little cog, upload new, and then select whatever build style you want to uh, upload. Very, very simple process, very quick, very easy, but something that you absolutely need to do before you can really use the software to its full potential. All right, first thing we need to go over is what are the parts and pieces of the Einstein. And the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the build platform. This is your build platform. You will notice that it is clean. There is no excess resin on this, even though I have used this printer many, many times. This should always get cleaned after each and every print. Uh, but this is basically where your print builds, all right? Uh, layer by layer, it will get stacked on top of this build plate. Obviously it is oriented kind of upside down. So your print will be hanging uh, from this once it is all completed. This goes in by fitting underneath this is basically a torque bolt. So when you get it, this torque bolt is screwed down. You will need to unscrew it enough to be able to slide your build plate underneath and then you tighten it. Right? I keep a little bit of pressure pushing it all the way in and then one click and it's on and secure. Okay, you will see there's no give in that once it's attached. Okay, so that's your build platform. This is your resin tank, and your resin tank attaches on either side with these two sliding jigs, okay? So to release it, we slide both of those back. This resin tank has a nice set of handles on it that we can use to remove it. And this has been very well thought out by, by Wally Renee uh, by adding these handles and this pour spout, and I'll show you the pour spout a little bit later, uh, it's a really nice tank to manage. Now you will likely want multiples of these. So my suggestion would be when you buy your printer, go ahead and order an additional two or three at least 
depending on how many materials you want to print, because that will make your printing life much better, much more efficient. If you're able to have a resin tank for each individual material that you want to print, that will save you from having to empty out uh, and switch materials all the time, which can be a little bit of a painstaking process. I'll show you what that looks like here in a little bit. Uh, but these resin tanks are, are very well thought out. There is a front and a back to this, okay? You may notice this little kind of a nub here on the back of the resin tank. This is a very important piece that must be oriented correctly to interact with the printer back here on the posterior left, okay? If this nub is not in contact with this sensor, the printer does not know that a resin tank is in place and will not print. So to orient it correctly, this pour spout will be at the back right and this just slides in, okay? You want to position these red sliders all the way to the back. You seat the resin tank and you slide these forward and you are ready to go. It always gives you a material tray change has been detected. So I usually will keep a number on each of these uh, depending on which material. But basically that allows the printer to keep track of how many jobs each resin tray has performed because these don't last forever. Uh, and at some point uh, you may start having a little bit of warping or issues with those, but you will get many, many prints out of them. Uh, and they're actually quite affordable. They only cost about $125 each, which compared to some of the other competitors is actually very reasonably priced. Okay, so we have our build platform. We have our resin tank. The other thing that's very important in this is when you order a material, you get a card with it, okay? This card is really important because this is another way that the printer knows what you're doing, okay? And so when you put, for instance, Flexera tank and you're printing some veneers or some crowns or something like that, you have to tell the printer that you're using Flexera. And there is a sensor behind the, the resin tank, all right, on the left-hand side, and you will just slide that card onto the sensor, you will hear a beep, okay? And that card, the material card, must be the same as the material that you selected in the software when you set up your print job. So if these two are not the same, you will get an error message when you go to print. When you first download the printing software from the Desktop Health uh, website, you will be asked to input a serial number of your printer. And you can find that back here on the back of the printer. It is the silver label, and it is a uh, combination of letters and numbers that will generally start with dh.ein, uh, and then a certain set of numbers after that. Once you input that information and send it off to Desktop Health, they will provide a license for you. If you were to take out your resin tank, you will see that beneath the resin tank is a basically a glass slab. And it's very, very important to keep this glass slab clean. So anytime you take the resin tank out, first of all, you should never have a job that is recently completed or a, a dirty, drippy um, build platform uh, when you take this resin tank out because if you have that resin that drips on the glass it's going to give you some headaches to clean that up so you always want to make sure that your build platform is clean when you take the resin tank out ask me how i know <laughs> the other thing is i will generally use a lens cleaner like i normally would use for my loops to clean this surface um, you just want to make sure that it's not noticeably dirty right not a lot of fingerprints uh, certainly no resin that is dripped on there. Um, if there's a little dust and things like that, that's not gonna harm anything, but you just wanna make sure for the most part that that um, glass slab is nice and clean. When you swap out a material tray, as they call it, a resin tank, uh, you will get a notification here on the screen that a materi material tray change has been detected. If you hit OK with that, it will select the material trays that you have. I have two currently that I use. One has printed five jobs. The other one has printed 10 jobs. This is 
Uh, the one that I currently have in there is what I use for model resin. So that is 000, 00001. That is the one that's in there. So I will select that. I will hit select and then I am ready to go, okay? The other thing to note is that in the settings, you have the option to preheat your material, okay? With the heating tab. That is really useful if you know you're going to print, say, Flexera um, in maybe within an hour or two. What you don't want to do is perpetually heat that resin because it can obviously change some of the properties of the resin. And it's probably asking a lot of your printer to continuously heat that material. So you don't want to have it heating all the time. Uh, if you forget to preheat, it only takes five or six minutes for the material to heat prior to printing anyway. That heat is a really important component of what makes the Einstein work so efficiently um, and predictably. So it's really important that you don't skip that heating step uh, in the beginning because that will ensure that your prints are successful a vast majority of the time. One of the really nice things about the Einstein's resin tray is this spout that we have here. And the reason that this is on here is to make it easier for you to either swap resin out of your existing resin tank to put a new resin in or sometimes uh, if you have a misprint and you need to clean the vat out and make sure you got all the polymerized material out of there you need to empty the tank completely so what i have is a is a funnel got this on amazon and i put a filter inside that will filter out any bits and pieces that are polymerized and then this nice little pour spout makes it a very clean and efficient job to just pour that resin back into the bottle. Believe me when I tell you, for the five or so years that I've been printing and had to do this job, it was my least favorite thing to do. This pour spout makes it so much easier. And in this case, I did not have a misprint. I just wanted to clean this out to show you all how to do it. And I'm a thrifty guy, so I'm going to get as much of this resin out as I can. So I'm going to use my spatula here to just move that resin down towards the pour spout to get it out. This also simplifies cleaning the, the tank. And once we get it to the point where we've gotten that resin out, I'm just going to spray some 99% alcohol in here and use a paper towel to clean the rest of it. Thanks for watching. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at Smile Professor. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a direct message and I'll try to help as best I can. Thanks.